Hey, hey, folks, welcome to another video in our Check Out Flight series where we take a more involved look at interesting aircraft, scenery, and other add ons for flight simulation. In this video, we'll be exploring the Falcon 50 from FlySomewhere. While not as popular or well known in the business jet market as names like Learjet or Gulfstream or the Cessna Citation brand, French aircraft manufacturer Dassault Aviation still has quite a fascinating history in business aviation. Dassault flew its first business jet, the Mystère 20, in May of 1963. The launch customer for the Mystère 20, believe it or not, was Pan American. One trip, Pan Am's legendary founder was looking for an aircraft to equip Pan Am's then new business jets division and selected the Mystère 20, which they renamed the Falcon 20 in North America. In another fascinating connection in aviation history, global logistics provider Federal Express actually launched its delivery service in 1972 with a fleet of Dassault's Falcon 20s. The Falcon 20 proved to be quite popular, with a total of over 500 aircraft delivered by the time production on the type ceased in 1988. Based on the Falcon 20's fuselage, Dassault developed the Trijet Falcon 50 to carry 8 to 10 passengers coast to coast across the United States, or even non-stop across the Atlantic. The Falcon 50, which launched in 1976, was equipped with three TFE 731 turbofans, could cruise at Mach 0.8, had a range of about 3,000 nautical miles, and could fly up to seven hours nonstop with fuel reserves. Despite being one of the first private jets on the market with intercontinental range, the Falcon 50 could still easily get in and out of airfields with 5,000 foot runways. The Falcon 50 EX, introduced in 1997, had better climb performance with a higher service ceiling of 49,000 feet and gained a 200 nautical mile increase in range. So FlySomewhere has created a pretty nice rendition of the Falcon 50, which we'll be exploring in this video on a flight from Dassault Falcon Jets Completion Center here in Little Rock, Arkansas, to Telluride high up in Colorado's Rocky Mountains. So here we are, we're flying 2-5 Victor X-Ray. We're uh, right in front of Dassault Falcon Jets Completion Center, as I mentioned here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Dassault actually manufactures their uh, jets in Europe, of course. They have them shipped here to uh, Little Rock, and uh, the Completion Center here is responsible for uh, all completions work, of course, interiors, painting, flight testing, uh, all that stuff to make the aircraft uh, fully ready for delivery to a customer. Uh, before we hop in the flight deck here, let's quickly take a look at our flight plan. Here we are in Little Rock, Arkansas, and we're flying west about uh, 2 hours and 15 minutes flight time to uh, Telluride, Colorado. And uh, planned cruise Mach number of 0.8, cruising flight level plan of 370, and we've got a total flight plan distance of 860 nautical miles. Uh, we are flying west today into uh, a pretty stiff headwind. Uh, average headwind component for us will be 43 knots. Uh, trip fuel, 4407 pounds. Time on route, as I mentioned, about 2 hours and 15 minutes. And we're going to be releasing with approximately uh, 7,000 pounds. Uh, we'll be rounding up. We're carrying five passengers in the back today. And our route of flight today, uh, Little Rock VOR to uh, the Tulsa VOR. Tulsa to... The uh, Garden City Tecan, Garden City on to Blue Mesa Gunnison VOR, then on to Dayuk, correction, then on to uh, Montrose VOR, Montrose on to the Dayuk fix, Dayuk on to Cones, at Cones uh, we'll be uh, either going visual or flying a localizer approach to uh, runway uh, 09 or 27, depends on what the winds are doing at uh, Telluride when we arrive. But uh, we'll quite likely, uh, if the winds have calmed down, land uh, straight in on 09er at Telluride. Otherwise, we'll fly a very challenging circling visual to runway 27, uh, which uh, should be okay as long as our uh, 
uh, approach speed is below 120 knots at uh, Telluride. So we'll see what uh, the winds call for once we get a Telluride. But uh, either way, it should be a nice uh, two hour and 15 minute flight uh, from Little Rock to Telluride today. Okay, so let's walk up to uh, this beautiful aircraft here. We'll hop in the flight deck, start powering the systems up, and uh, we'll get going shortly. We'll hop up the stairs. Okay, let's hop into this beautiful cabin here. Really well appointed, as you can see. We've got a uh, microwave greeting us as soon as we come in through the doorway here. And a really nicely well appointed cabin here in back. Room for eight to 10 passengers, like I mentioned. And uh, if we hop back here, actually, let's go all the way back. There's even a uh, really nicely appointed uh, lavatory back here. Couch here that you can stretch out on. Got a sink here. Really, really well appointed cabin, this. Okay, let's uh, hop up front here to the flight deck and we'll start powering this aircraft up and uh, we'll get going shortly. Two-person flight crew, of course, and we've got uh, one jump seat here uh, behind the uh, FO's station. Okay, let's hop in here. Let's go ahead and start uh, powering this aircraft up. Let's uh, pull up a checklist here. We've got our uh, external cart uh, connected earlier. We did our walk around earlier as well. Uh, so let's pull up a checklist here and go through it. Uh, before starting engines, power on, checklist, uh, battery, one and two, on. Main bus tie, tied. And a C and D bus switch is uh, tied as well. External lights on as required. Let's go ahead and get our uh, nav lights on. And let's go ahead and start up our APU right now. And uh, let's turn on our number two booster pump there. And uh, let's go to our APU panel back here. Let's get the uh, master on, gen switch on, and let's go ahead and start. APU starting up there. Once the APU is started up, we can uh, then go ahead and disconnect the ground card. Okay, good start on the APU. Bleed air on. All right, and let's get our avionics master on here. And let's the uh, let's let the GPSs turn on there. We've got two uh, Garmin GTN 750 units in here. And let's go ahead and load up our uh, flight plan here, going to uh, Telluride, Colorado, from Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. Okay, let's go to our flight plan page here. Waypoint by waypoint, Telluride or uh, Little Rock to Telluride, Tango X-ray, Tango Echo X-ray, and uh, our first waypoint is going to be Little Rock VOR. Then we're going to put in Tulsa Tango Uniform Lima. Then we're going to put in. Garden City, Golf Charlie Kilo. After Garden City, we're going on to Blue Mesa Gunnison, that's Hotel Bravo Uniform. There we go. And after Blue Mesa, we've got the uh, Victor 244 Airway to the Montrose VOR. Let's load that. And after Montrose, we've got uh, Victor 68 to Cones. Echo Tango Lima, let's load that up. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and save this flight plan. Store it. Awesome. That's stored. All right, once again, we're going to load this on this side as well. Okay, we loaded it up on this side as well. Little Rock, Tulsa, Garden City, Blue Mesa. Myers, Montrose. Dayak, Cones, there we go. We got all that in. Fantastic.
And one last thing I'm going to do here is go to our terrain page on the second uh, GTN 750 unit here, and I'm going to disable the TOS system, or inhibit it rather, so we don't get uh, dual terrain alerts during the course of this flight. All right, fantastic. And let's go to the map page on unit one. Let's go ahead and disconnect that uh, ground power unit back there. We got the APU running, so we don't need that anymore. Okay, we hopped on VATSIM just now. Uh, looks like Memphis Center is online, so uh, so we're going to go ahead and tune in Memphis Center here, 133.65. They provide uh, ATC coverage for the Little Rock area, so let's get that in. And we'll call them up to uh, pick up our IFR clearance to uh, tell you right today. United uh, 1331 1020 at 12 runway 36 center RNF Beal clear for takeoff. All right, uh, 36 center clip for takeoff, RNF Beal for uh, United 1331. Okay, before we pick up our IFR clearance here, let's go ahead and hop in back and we'll get our doors closed. Passengers are on board. Let's go ahead and get that door closed here. Okay, there's the door closed. Let's hop back into the flight deck here. We'll get our November eight six Zulu clear. I have our clearance to uh, tell you right. will report uh, field in sight. Actually, one thing I want to do real quick before I forget is also set my pressurization system here. We're cruising at flight level two seven zero planned, so I'm just going to set that for that. Make sure our barrel reference is set to two nine or nine or two, and there we go. All right, let's go ahead and pick up that IFR clearance now. Memphis Center, good evening. Falcon Jet 25 Victor X ray on the ground at Little Rock with the weather. IFR to Telluride. Falcon uh, 25 Victor X ray, you're clear to tell Telluride Airport via asphalt. Climb and maintain 5,000. Expect flight level 370 within 10 one minutes. Squawk 5612. Falcon 25 Victor X ray, clear to Telluride as file, climb maintain 5000, expect 37010 10 minutes after, squawk, squawk 5612 for uh, 25 Victor X ray. And the 25 Victor X ray readback is correct, the uh, Little Rock altimeter 3023. Advise ready for taxi, you can expect four left. Four left, we'll advise ready for taxi, 25 Victor X ray, thank you. United 1331. Okay, four Center, left is the runway used today. Coming through 2700 for United 1331. It looks like we've got uh, 16,000. 16, Another aircraft there, just departing. And uh, let's set our heading bug here to 040 initially for a departure off of uh, four left. Okay. Let's go through our checklist here before starting engines. Inverters checked on, lights out. Cabin cockpit lighting is appropriate. We got what we need there. GPS is on, seat belts, no smoking suns on. Emergency light on, then armed. Fantastic. Seats and pedals adjusted. Fuel gross weight counters zeroed and set. Uh, fuel quantity, total and rear checked. Hydraulic quantity was checked. And uh, standby pump here on, then auto. Stall, uh, two auto slats tested. Let's go ahead and test that real quick. Okay, air brakes cycled and then we'll retract. There's uh, two positions there, corresponding to the air brakes uh, being open there. And just like in the flight sim where Lear 35, uh, there's no auto air brakes uh, on touchdown, so you got to remember to manually extend those air brakes. Okay, let's retract them all the way then, back to position zero. And I do have a couple of uh, joystick buttons assigned there to uh, help out a little bit. Okay, uh, trims checked and set. We've set it for takeoff in the green band there. Fantastic. And uh, standby pump can be turned off now. Taxi 2, runway 36. Center via Bravo Sierra across from my uh, BMO cabin warning, so let's go ahead and test Sierra that. Cabin warning is good. BMO warning is good as well. Oxygen masks and calm 100% tested. Radios, radar, altimeter on and tested. 
And uh, ADA's clearance checked and copied. Navigation systems programmed. RMI selector set. Altimeter is 3023 set. Uh, toll card bugs computed and set. Let's go ahead and set uh, our VR there. To 105. That's our uh, rotation speed today at our gross weight. This aircraft has some pretty large and effective flaps and leading edge slats as well. And so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it can take it, it can get in out of some pretty impressive short fields, uh, yeah. runways remember, uh, eight, uh, around 5,000 feet uh, long. And so, uh, flaps go all the way down to 48 degrees. We're going to be using flaps 20 for takeoff and uh, pretty low rotation speed there for takeoff. So that should be good. And let's go ahead and do our departure brief here real quick. Uh, Let's make sure we finish the checklist first. Pressurization is set. Let's go ahead and do our departure brief, and then we'll go through our starting engines uh, checklist. Okay. Let's do our departure brief here. The uh, weather at Little Rock. Winds 0, 3, 0, 6 knots. Visibility 10 statute miles. Clear skies. Temperature 29, 2.12. Altimeter 3023. And uh, we're located at uh, the Dassault Falcon Jet hangar here, or near the Dassault Falcon Jet uh, Completion Center facilities. We're going to be taxiing uh, from this uh, stand here, uh, quite likely via Charlie Papa to uh, cross four left, and then via Foxtrot to hold short uh, four left at either uh, Echo or uh, the other hold point there. And uh, our V speeds uh, for takeoff, uh, V1 is going to be 91 knots, VR 105, V2 105, uh, flap retraction speed VFR 120, and uh, our uh, clean speed 1.5 VS of 160. Uh, takeoff N1 of 99.1%. And our climb thrust, 97%. And our climb schedule calls for us to climb at 260 knots uh, until we reach Mach 0.72. We'll climb Mach 0.72 until we reach flight level 370, and then we'll accelerate to Mach 0 0.80 in the cruise. And uh, no published uh, SID here for this depart for here for this airport, so uh, we're just going to be uh, getting radar vectors to uh, Little Rock or Tulsa on departure. So that is our plan. And that's our departure brief. Any questions? No questions. We're all good there. That was our uh, fire system, fire warnings test earlier that I should have done. There we go. That's all good. Sounds like a uh, police siren from days of yore there. Let's go through our starting engines checklist. Parking brake, uh, full aft. There we go. Cabin warning light out. It is. That was eliminated in red earlier. Now it's out. Fuel boost pumps on and lights out. So let's get all three fuel boost pumps there on. External lights, anti-collision to red. Okay, we got all our gen switches on there. Panel is set, ready for start. Let's go ahead and start up number two. Start sequences two, three, and one. Start up number two first. See the engine motoring there. Let's go ahead and move our thrust lever for number two into the start position, or idle position rather. N1 coming up, ITT. And it looks like a good start on number two. Let's go ahead and start up number three here. Start switch, push down for number three. Waiting for N2 there to come up about 10%. Uh, Thrust lever for number three into the uh, idle position. N2, ITT, N1. Look like a good start there on Number three as well, engine stabilizing. Let's go ahead and start up number one now. Kepler 1337, descend via the vans to arrival, landing north Memphis altimeter. There's N2 coming up. Right, we'll Thrust lever into the, the idle position on number one. 
Yeah, uh, JetBlue 1337 to send via the vans to arrival, landing north. That's a south altimeter 3021. And it looks like a good start on number one as well. Fantastic. Okay, let's go through our after start checklist here. Are we from that okay, after start checklist, seven? avionics master is on, engine instruments checked, hydraulic pressures and quantities checked, hydraulic QRL. warnings lights checked, DC power Nine selector to normal. Looks like normal there. Call the APU, GPU, stop, disconnect. Stop. Turn it off. Failure warning panel uh, should be normal. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. And uh, let's go ahead and get our main bus tie into the flight normal position. There we go. Lights out. Bus voltage checked. You're still with me. You're in handoff, so he'll be, uh, uh, he'll be picking you up shortly. Batteries checked. Horizon, that, yeah. horizon standby. Power voltage checked. Emergency battery power checked. Engine computers checked and on. Windshield sight heat normal. Copilot sight heat on. Okay, and standby pump to on. Landing north, that is a 36 partly, correct? Affirmative. Stall worn, stall one, auto slats tested. Mock trim on. Lights out. November, uh, Autopilot flight direction function. Zulu, the, wind, the meridian winds are 350 at 8, gust to 1. Yaw damper off. Clear for IRS to nav, right, don't need that. And uh, let's get our taxi light on for the taxi. We'll get uh, flaps to 20. And uh, steering checked. We'll check that during the taxi. Brake selector number one and on. There we go. Slats flaps. Flaps 20 set. And uh, thrust reverser is uh, stowed. There's only a thrust reverser in the number two engine on the Falcon 50. It's back here. There's a little thrust reverser bucket back there. That is stowed, so that's fantastic. Okay, and taxi check uh, will complete it once we do our steering check. Okay, let's go ahead and request our taxi clearance here from uh, Memphis Center. Memphis Center, Falcon 25, Victor X-Ray, a uh, bit of a delay there, but uh, we're ready to taxi 04 left. Falcon 25, Victor X-Ray, Memphis Center, taxi 2, runway 4 left via Charlie um, Foxtrot, and uh, I'm sorry, Char Charlie Papa. Memphis Center, Blue 1337. Uh, tw uh, two five uh, Victor X Ray Chuck taxi via Charlie Papa cross runway uh, four left and uh, Fox Trot after that. Runway four left taxi via Charlie Papa cross four left and Fox Trot after that for two five Victor X Ray. Okay, and steering check. Uh, that's our taxi check complete. And our taxi instructions yeah, were as we briefed. Uh, all I remember is a clip Charlie, the Papa, cross four left of Papa, Foxtrot to home short of four left. You're clear to descend via the vans to arrival, like, uh, landing north. Expect a visual approach, runway 36 right. Information Tango is current at Memphis. Let me know when you have information Tango. Okay, right on Charlie here. It's uniform. All right. Let's get those uh, taxi lights on there. Actually, I got that on earlier. Fantastic. And we'll hang a left on Papa. And we got uh, our transfer pumps on earlier. That was missing on the checklist for some reason, but uh, that's kind of critical. So the fuel system on the Falcon 50, as we come up on two, on four left here, we'll be crossing four left. Let's get get those uh, anti-collision lights all the way on, landing lights on as well. Actually, we can just go to pulse for now. We'll turn those off on the other side. Uh, but uh, there's wing tanks and center tanks that uh, carry most of the fuel here in the uh, Falcon 50. And then there's three feeder tanks for each of the three engines. Uh, they carry about 600 pounds of fuel or so. And uh, those feeder tanks actually supply the engines. And so uh, the transfer tanks, or the transfer pumps here, transfer the fuel from the uh, 
Let's get those anti-collision lights back to red, landing lights off. Those uh, transfer pumps there move the uh, fuel from the um, wing and center tanks into the uh, feeder tanks uh, to uh, feed fuel to the engines. So it's kind of an interesting system here for fuel in the Falcon 50. Okay, we're on Foxtrot. We're going to continue down Foxtrot here to uh, hold short of four left for departure. Let's get our before takeoff checklist here. Trims uh, three set for takeoff in the green band. Slats and flaps. Flaps 20 set for takeoff. Slats green. Flight controls. Full left. Full right. Actually, we'll pull up the yoke there. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Full up, full down, neutral, and uh, we'll do our uh, rudder check uh, once we're stopped here at the end of the runway. Cockpit window closed and locked. Crew briefing completed earlier. Flight instruments flight director. Let's go ahead and uh, go to alt cell there. We'll uh, set heading bug there. Flight runway heading initially. And let's get our pedo heats on here. And our uh, alert system there is completely clear. No alerts showing. And once Simple we stop, 13, fly heading two, eight, we'll uh, do for our rudder check. For visual approach from one, three, six, right. Maintain one, zero, thousand. Alright, fly heading two, eight, five at one, zero, thousand, thirteen, thirty, seven. Let's hide those yokes there. And a hole short and, uh, of four left here on Foxtrot. X-ray, wind zero six zero at seven, runway four left, flight runway heading, clear for takeoff. Four left, flight runway heading, clear for takeoff, a two five vector X-ray. Okay, clear for takeoff here, rudder full left, full right. Before takeoff checklist complete, and uh, let's go ahead and do our lineup check here. Start selectors to air start. And uh, pedo switch is on, exterior lights, landing lights on, anti-collision light on, recognition lights on. Alright, warning lights, flags cleared, radar on, transponder on, runway, 04 left confirmed, 040 in the heading confirmed. And lineup check completed. Okay, let's go ahead and get going here. Clear for takeoff. Okay, we'll set uh, takeoff N1 approximately uh, 99%. Let's keep it rolling here. Okay, 80 knots. V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. We're through flap retraction speed already. Let's go ahead and retract flaps. We'll fly around by heading. Up to uh, 5,000 feet. Let's retract the uh, slats as well. Let's get our autopilot uh, panel there. Yaw Stop damper engaged. Auto. Our contact, say, 25 Victor X-ray is out of 2,000 for 5,000. 25 Victor X-ray, climb and maintain 1, 5, 15,000. Continue runway heading as soon as I get you clear of some restricted airspace. Uh, I'll have you on course. Climb and maintain 1, 5, 15,000. 25 Victor X-ray copies. Okay, up to uh, 15,000 feet here. We're climbing like a rocket, obviously. Pretty lightly loaded at this point. 
and uh, let's go to VS Bugbear and and let's accelerate to 250 knots. Then we'll climb out at 250. Okay, there we go. Back to IAS mode. In November uh, 25, uh, Victor X ray, turn left heading 290. Left heading 290, 25 Victor X ray. Heading 1401 heavy. Contact okay, left to heading of uh, 290. Okay, fantastic. Delta 403, clear direct Hudson. Okay, let's do our climb check here. Landing gear is up. Slats, uh, flaps clean, standby pump to auto. And uh, climb power, we want to set 97% uh, approximately. Should have done that earlier actually to. Uh, 1337, turn right at 290. And uh, two ten thousand. Let's go ahead and get those uh, landing lights off. Recognition lights off as well. And uh, we can also go ahead and get the start switches back to uh, ground start. Falcon five, Victor, actually proceed direct Tulsa, climb and maintain flight level three seven zero. Proceed direct Tulsa, climb and maintain flight level three seven zero. Falcon two five, direct three. Thank you. Okay, up to flight level three seven zero. Proceed direct. And uh, we're proceeding direct to uh, Tulsa here. All right, there we go. Direct Tulsa, activate. And let's go ahead and pull up our autopilot panel here. Let's go to nav mode and we're proceeding direct Tulsa. Okay, fantastic. And uh, we're going to climb out at uh, 260 knots, actually. So let's go back into VS mode here. And we'll accelerate to uh, 260 knots before we re-engage IAS mode. So we're going to climb out at 260 knots up to uh, Mach 0.72. Then we'll climb up at Mach 0.72 all the way up to flight level uh, 370. about 260 knots, IAS mode, and we'll continue our climb here. Kipling 1337, turn right, heading 330, joining the runway 36 right, local Audrey. This is maintain 2000. All right. Climbing out about Arkansas here. Let's go back to that climb checklist. Make sure we complete it. No smoking seatbelt sign as required. We can turn those off. Let the uh, folks in the back stretch their legs a little bit. And coming up on transition there, there's 18,000. Altimeters reset 2992. Fantastic. And uh, exterior lights are required. Let's check on the pressurization there. Fantastic. Cap preservation system is doing what it's supposed to as we continue to climb up here to uh, flight level 370. Okay, climb check completed. Let's go ahead and get my uh, transfer intercom switches on and my cross feeds on as well. That way uh, all the fuel tanks are doing what they're supposed to be doing and equalizing. And here's uh, kind of a readout of what's going on in the different fuel tanks under the aircraft options uh, window here from Fly Somewhere. So essentially uh, you got left wing tanks, right wing tanks, center wing tank, and uh, these are feeding fuel to the feeder tanks. Uh, which are then feeding fuel to the uh, three engines. So uh, the transfer pumps uh, keep the uh, feeder tanks 
uh, essentially topped up to supply fuel to the three engines. And that's how that works. Quite an interesting setup. Continuing to climb out here, flight level uh, 250 fi we're coming up on. Climbing out at 260 knots. Once we hit Mach 0.72, we'll climb out in Mach, uh, Mach climb mode until we reach flight level 370, then we'll accelerate to Mach 0.8 for uh, the cruise. Actually, I can offer, uh, I didn't pick this up earlier, flight level 380 or 360 for your direction of flight, uh, same request. Uh, Falcon 5 Victor X-ray, uh, we'll take flight level 360, actually. Filed that uh, wrongly by accident. Uh, flight level 360 would work well, thank you. I'm being team flight level 360 for uh, Falcon uh, 5 Victor X-ray. Flight level 360 for Falcon 5 Victor X-ray, thank you. At, at the wrong cruising uh, altitude file there, you can make your, should have been uh, 360. Uh, hold short of the uh, runway 36 center and contact Memphis approach. One, Going westbound, five, obviously. Evens. Even uh, uh, flight levels. Center for taxi, cold short, runway 36 center. Somehow I messed that up. But uh, yes, contact the approach control that's what we'll plan for. Nice large windows here in the cabin, affording the uh, executive passengers in back some awesome views of the countryside here as we climb out. FedEx uh, 3024 Memphis Center, Roger. Uh, I'll have lower for you here. Uh, oh, and another uh, couple of them. Uh, okay, we're coming up on Mach 0.72 there. Once we hit Mach 0.72, we'll engage uh, Mach mode in the climb. There's Mach 0.72 approximately. Let's go ahead and engage Mach mode. And we'll climb out at Mach 0.72 until we get to uh, flight level Coming up on flight level 360. Altitude capture mode engaged there by the autopilot. And we're going to accelerate up to uh, Mach 0.8 in the cruise. Now this aircraft, when it's a little more lightly loaded, can cruise up in the flight level 400s, uh, but with our current fuel load and passengers in the back, uh, I'm going to stop up in the high flight level three, uh, 300s here, because otherwise we'll have a super sluggish climb up to uh, somewhere in the flight level 400s. We might do a step climb later if we feel like it. Okay, just going to let the aircraft accelerate up here to Mach 0.8, and then we'll pull back on the throttles. Okay, coming up at Mach 0.8 there, we'll back off on the throttles a little bit. Okay, folks, we're at cruising flight level, flight level 360. 
passengers and back enjoying refreshments, a little bit of champagne, whatever executive class business jet uh, passengers do on these uh, long flights. Got a microwave oven here if we need to use it. Again, this is a super well appointed cabin. Fly Somewhere did a tremendous job modeling this. Really do like it a lot. All right, folks, sit back, relax, enjoy some Chase Plane cinematic camera views of the climb and the cruise. And uh, we'll talk to you again through the magic of video editing in a few minutes as we come up on our top of descent into Telluride, Colorado. Enjoy. Okay, folks, welcome back. We're coming up on our top of descent here in just another minute and a half, it looks like. And uh, we're over the majestic Colorado Rockies here. And the views are only going to get a lot more spectacular as we descend into uh, Telluride. Let's go ahead and uh, start prepping for the descent here. Let's pull up our descent checklist. Uh, we're going to set our pressure temperature controllers for the descent into uh, Telluride. Telluride, of course, is located at a pretty high elevation of uh, approximately 9,100 feet. So I'm actually going to roll my cabin pressure selector here up to uh, 9,100 approximately. There we go. And uh, as we come up on our top of descent here, I'm going to set my altitude selector to 12,000 feet which is the altitude we want to descend to. And uh, let's go to all cell here. Let's go to vertical speed mode. And uh, we'll go ahead and roll our uh, vertical speed selector down to uh, 2,200 feet per minute approximately. All right, initiate our descent there and we'll descend at Mach 0.8. 
until we get to uh, 330 knots, then we'll descend to 330 knots uh, and eventually slow down to 250 knots. So that's our plan. Okay, let's continue through our descent checklist here. Entrance door curtain, we got an entrance door. We're gonna leave that open. Anti-icing is required, we're gonna leave that off. Altimeters, we'll set that at the transition level. And uh, we'll continue the uh, descent check once we get through our transition level here. Okay, let's go ahead and do our approach brief here. The uh, latest METAR at uh, Telluride winds are out of the west, 270 at 6 knots. Visibility 10 statute miles. Clear skies, temperature 19, dew point minus 12, and altimeter is 3057. Fantastic. And uh, since there's clear skies at Telluride, we're going to plan on the visual approach to runway 09er. We're going to have a slight tailwind there of about 6 knots, but that's fine. Uh, that's actually preferable than the much riskier strategy of uh, doing the uh, circling visual to uh, 27, although that might be a ton of fun as well. But uh, we'll save that for another day and possibly a future live stream. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's, uh, we're not going to be using this instrument procedure, but we are going to take a look at it because uh, there's some useful information here uh, for us that we can reference uh, during this approach. So we're proceeding to cones, as I mentioned. That's one of the uh, uh, waypoints on our route today. So at cones, uh, we're going to descend down to 12,000 uh, to this fix called Hodlow. At Hodlow, we're going to join the uh, localizer uh, India Tango Extra Echo X-Ray. Frequency 109.3, final approach code 093. We're going to descend down about 11,500 at this fix called Zogbu. Uh, but once we get a visual of the airport, uh, we're just going to follow the Pappies all the way in and land on Zero Niner. Uh, MSA's uh, useful information again for us, even though we're not going to be using the instrument procedure. Within 25 nautical miles of the Cones VOR, 11,300 feet uh, this sector to the uh, west and 15,500 feet to this sector to the east and south. And uh, if you need to go around, of course, we'll make a right turn going back towards uh, Cones and circling back uh, to try and take another attempt at 0 niner. Uh, and the runway length is 7,111 feet long, plenty long. This air this aircraft uh, can land in a pretty short uh, distance. Our calculated VREF is 106 knots. We're going to bump that up to 111 for the uh, final approach speed. And uh, once we land, we're going to taxi all the way down to Alpha 3 here, take Alpha 3 to uh, one of the uh, parking, uh, to the general aviation parking here at the ramp. So that's our plan. Uh, and let's take a look real quick at the required runway length. Going to back off the throttle just a little bit there so we don't overspeed it during the descent. As I mentioned, uh, we calculated our landing distance required earlier, uh, so we were off 106 and uh, we're anticipating about 2,875 feet uh, required for the landing distance, so we're all good there. Plenty of runway to land even with the tailwind at, uh, uh, at Telluride. And of course uh, that landing distance will increase with the tailwind, but that's fine. We still got plenty of runway, so we're all good there. Okay, let's keep our descent going here. Once again, we're aiming for about 330 knots in the descent here. And let's set our uh, speed bug here to uh, 111. That's our approach speed. Okay, just over Montrose, we're proceeding on to Dayuk. Cones, cones left turn to Hodlow, and we'll try and uh, use the localizer for guidance there to uh, line up with runway 09 or at Telluride. 
and let's check on the weather here at Telluride once again. Wind still 270 at 6 knots. Clear skies, temperature 19, dew point minus 12, altimeter is 3057. So really high pressure here at Telluride today. And of course, I uh, didn't mention it earlier during the approach briefing, but we're going to be landing S plus, S plus flaps 48. That should really help us really help slow us down. So even though we're up at the high altitudes here, uh, the ground speed should still be pretty low, considering our low approach speed. Fantastic. And of course, uh, once we land, we're going to have to manually extend those speed brakes to help slow down, and no uh, auto wheel brakes there, so we're going to have to manually brake to uh, slow down as well. But that's fine. No big deal. Okay, a true transition there. Let's uh, reset our arrow ref there, or altimeters, to 3057. Okay, altimeters reset, and uh, forgot to do that as well here in the pressurization system. Altimeters should be reset to uh, 3057. Okay, that's set. Okay, let's keep that descent going. Let's continue through our uh, descent checklist here. Okay, altimeter transition level. We've set our altimeter setting 3057. Exterior lights, uh, we're descending through 10,000 feet. AGL now, so let's go ahead and get our landing lights on. Fantastic. And one of the neat features of the Falcon 50 is actually got uh, the ability to pulse the landing lights. So let me show you the difference here. This is the landing lights on in normal steady mode, of course. That's what it looks like, obviously. And then we've got pulse mode, which looks like that. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you're wondering what the advantage of pulse mode is for the landing lights, um, at night, uh, or even during twilight, sunset, sunrise hours, the landing lights can actually help you illuminate the ground, right, uh, as you're coming into land. Makes complete sense at night. But uh, during the daytime, the landing lights are there primarily to help increase your visibility to other pilots. They're not really there to illuminate the ground, so to speak. So the pulse feature of the landing lights really allows you to improve your uh, visibility to other pilots and other aircraft in the area. So uh, that's a neat, neat uh, uh, feature of the uh, pulse function on the landing lights. And in fact, considering it's daylight outside, what we're actually going to do is we're going to leave the landing lights on in the pulse uh, mode there for the approach. All right, let's go ahead and slow down to uh, 250 there. Okay, coming up on cones, we're turning towards the airport here. Let's slow down. Let's go ahead and get our fasten seat belts and no smoking lights on. Again, we're coming up on 12,000 there. Okay, let's go to heading mode there, and uh, we'll switch the CDI to localizer, and let's uh, arm the localizer there to capture the localizer. Okay, coming up on 12,000, there is Telluride in the distance. Just magnificent, the scenery from Orbex, photorail scenery coverage for most of the surrounding area. Capturing the localizer there. Let's uh, do a quick wind check here. Wind still 270 at six knots, so I think we can land okay on runway nine or there. Let's go ahead and uh, go down 11,500. Okay, we'll slow to 180. A little bit bumpy here in the mountains. Turbulence uh, jostling us around just a little bit. Glad we got those seat belts on earlier for the VIPs in the back.
Okay, approach check, uh, toll cards, bucks, computer and set, crew briefing complete, fuel intercom and cross feeds, let's close those. Closed. Altimeters three set, brakes number one on. Standby pump to on. Avionics set, slats flaps. Let's extend the slats. And let's go, let's slow down to 160 for now. Let's slow down to 140. Let's go ahead and uh, disconnect the autopilot there. And let's start uh, going down the glide path here. Okay, let's go flaps 20. Gear coming down. Assist regard. That altitude alert is not necessary. We got a visual. Approach check completed earlier. Let's do our landing check. Landing gear down. Let's slow down to our final approach speed here of 111. Let's go flaps uh, 48 there. Let's get our ignition on there to uh, air start. There we go. And uh, don't want to get too slow or descend too fast there. Okay, landing gear down and checked. Flaps set for landing, flaps 48. Exterior lights on as required. Autopilot disengaged, landing checklist complete. And of course, Igniter is set to uh, air start earlier. So we're all set there. Okay, let's go ahead and get established on this uh, final approach here. Get stable, and we'll see how we do on the landing. Helps, of course, to uh, turn off 500, 500. the flight director there. 900. Trial to idle. Hello? Touchdown. Reversers. Speed brakes. Wheel brakes. Slow down here. Thrust reversers back to normal. Or thrust reverser, but rather back to uh, stowed. And uh, air brakes. We extended earlier. Let's go ahead and retract those. And uh, we'll exit here on Alpha 3, which is conveniently placed uh, right as we stop uh, our landing roll. Fantastic. Okay, welcome to Telluride, ladies and gentlemen. 9,070 feet high. And uh, we'll taxi to the ramp up ahead and get some of that uh, fresh Colorado mountain air here, up in the high mountains of the uh, Colorado Rockies. Just simply spectacular. Gulfstream there, looks like another Falcon jet on the ramp as well. And uh, as we blind everybody, all the personnel there on the ramp, uh, <laughs> let's stop here momentarily. We'll uh, check out some replays of that landing, of course. Uh, then we'll come back in. Uh, go through our after landing flows and our shutdown flows once we get to the uh, parking and uh, we'll call it an evening. Let's check out those replays.
Okay, folks, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get those uh, landing lights off. Don't need the taxi lights, actually. And uh, we'll move the anti-collision light uh, back to red, turn off those strobes. And let's go ahead and uh, make sure the thrust reverser is stowed, and we'll start uh, taxiing in to the ramp. So we'll taxi past this um, Gulf Stream here, the other Falcon jet, I think. And we'll pull up to the uh, building there on the right. Let's go keep going through our, our after landing flows here. Anti ice off. Pitot heats off. Windshield heats off. Rear is standby. We'll uh, set the transponder to standby in a couple of secs here. Let's get those flaps up. Slats retracted as well. Uh, we'll just pull parallel here to this uh, empty space right by the uh, terminal building here, and we'll have the ground crew push us back into that empty space. Okay. Stop right here. Okay, let's set uh, transponder to standby. Let's uh, go up here to the overhead panel. Bus tie to uh, tide. Igniter's off. There we go. Anti-collision lights uh, to red as required. Landing lights off. Slats, flaps handle to uh, clean. It's clean. Air brakes uh, retracted and light is out. 
Okay, fantastic. Uh, trims, let's set that for takeoff. Into the green band there, that's great. Uh, radios is required, floor heat uh, both off. APU is required, uh, we'll leave the APU off actually. We'll uh, switch to ground power here uh, once we're uh, pushed back into that space there. Okay, let's set the parking brake here. Four five, Marion 24, 19, 22, 17, 230 for 260. There we go. Um, standby pump off for the parking checklist. Transponder Four, off. Inverters off. Taxi light off. And uh, power levers to cut off. So let's uh, move all three power, uh, thrust levers there to cut off. Shut down all three engines. Transfer pumps off and boost per pumps off as well. Anti-collision lights off. And uh, seat belt sign, no smoking signs off as well. Okay. Navigation lights uh, might as well be turned off as well for now. And uh, let's get the gen switches off. And uh, we'll let the ground uh, crew here push us back into uh, that spot there. Okay, ground crew has pushed us back into that spot there. Bus C and D switches off. Battery switches can be turned off as well. Make sure your cabin lights are off, batteries are off. Parking brake as required. We've got the chocks in, so let's go ahead and release the parking brake there. And let's go ahead and open up the door. Okay, door open. We let the passengers out earlier. But uh, let's step out here, breathe the fresh mountain air here up in the uh, high altitudes of Telluride, Colorado. Okay, folks, welcome to beautiful Telluride, Colorado. Beautiful clear skies here as the sun sets here in the mountains. That was a really fun flight in the Flysomware Falcon 50 from the So Falcon Jets Completion Center in Little Rock, Arkansas, up here at the high altitude of Telluride, Colorado. Really hope you enjoyed watching this video. As always, if you like this content, be sure to hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. And I look forward to catching you in a future video. Y'all take care. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye. Good evening, Gulfstream November 558, five, Golf Alpha, flight level 400. Zero, zero. 2832 with C, fast 14